What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for checking in. In this video, we're going to do a market recap and we're going to go over some levels that we can expect for tomorrow and to close out the week. We're going to go over SPY, IWM, QQQ, Tesla, Apple, and NVIDIA. Uh, we have a lot to go over, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to first start with SPY where we can see that on the daily candles, SPY is approaching its 2023 highs. In fact, it's making newer highs slowly day over day. Now some levels to focus on for SPY are going to be the 429.67 resistance and then the 431.70 resistance right after. You can see that for the last 5 days or so we have been consolidating in between the 426 and 429.67 area which means that bulls are needing to break out of this area for us to get that rally. So if you've traded SPY the last week you do know that there's a little bit of frustration because SPY can't seem to keep a trend however money is going into different pockets of the market. We can see that while SPY is consolidating, IWM has had a phenomenal week and that is the small cap index which means that small caps are starting to see the money flow. So as money has left large cap tech stocks, it's starting to move into small cap tech stocks which is why IWM is moving higher. And we can see that volume is extremely strong which means that it is likely going to continue. Now here are some levels to focus on for IWM. We're going to first start by looking at the resistance of 189. Above 189, it can move to 191.70. Now usually we, use, we do use high of day to find the resistance, but in this case, our resistance point here is a dollar higher than usual, and that's because when looking at IWM on the daily candles, we can see that they got rejected right here at, one, at 189 back in March of 2023. So considering that rejection there at 189, we have to place our resistance at that point and we'll have to see IWM break above that point with strong volume for us to potentially take calls and ride them towards a price target of around 191.50 to 192. Now if it breaks lower and it moves below 185, it's not a really big deal because it could still be in a very strong bullish trend you can see that when it developed its bullish flag right here, the stock consolidated in a pretty healthy range and then moved higher. So move if it moves below 185, it could be kind of a warning sign, but it's not really going to get sold off unless it breaks below 183.50. At that point, it will be a very sharp decline towards 180 to 181. The next stock that we're watching, of course, is going to be QQQ. Of course, QQQ, like SPY, has had more of a consolidation and a pullback week as we saw most large cap tech stocks pull back. So for triple Q here, we're going to need to be looking at this following range. Let's go ahead and pull this up. Uh, first of all, QQQ is currently trading in a bullish trend. So, you know, it, I know it pulled back this week. However, overall, it's holding a strong trend. And it will remain in that trend as long as it holds above 346.50. If it moves below that point, then it has a good chance of sharply falling towards 339 to 341. Now notice we've said sharply falling multiple times now. And the reason why we know it's going to be a sharp fall is because when we look back at the actual move up, you can see that it was a very sharp move higher. And it's very easy to fill these full body candles down when a support breaks. So if this 346.50 support, which Triple Q double bottomed at here, breaks, this will sharply get filled back down, these full body candles on the hourly chart. If you're looking for a bullish breakout, you're looking at 357.50. Above that point, Triple Q can go to 362 to 363. That's the next available resistance for it. And in fact, that would put it at a 52 week high. The next talk on our watch list, of course, is going to be Tesla. Now, Tesla has made phenomenal moves today, but it wasn't till after market till it really made its big move. So while everybody's expecting Tesla to come down, Tesla is actually pushing higher, and we can call this a short squeeze. If you saw our Sunday video, we talked about NVIDIA, and we talked about how the NVIDIA move higher scared people out of the market. So on this move, more than $2 billion were lost on the short seller side. Therefore, NVIDIA's jump made short sellers get scared. And for short sellers to get out of their positions, they have to buy back their positions, which will boost the stock very sharply higher. So as Tesla pushes higher, more and more short squeeze uh, or more and more short sellers are selling out of their positions. Now, here are some levels that we're talking about for Tesla or the, some levels that we're focused on rather. Um, Tesla currently, of course, is in a bullish trend and it will remain as so as long as it's trading above 230, 
Even if it breaks below 230, the stock is still within a pullback range because it's made such a sharp move higher. So it has a lot of breathing room to the bottom. However, just keep in mind that the stock may rally much higher than you expect it to before pulling back. It's very hard to chase a stock at this point and you also want to be very careful because pullbacks can, get, can be very sharp. If you decide to trade the stock, you're going to be first looking at, at the resistance of 249. That is the highest point that it made in post-market today before pulling back. So at 249 tomorrow, if you're looking at Tesla, you need that breakout in order for it to move towards a price target of 255 to 258. Now keep in mind, Tesla rallied all day today, so there's going to be a lot of eyes, and it is Friday, so market makers may actually just kind of flatline it for the day or maybe pull it back, so it could be a premium draining day. So if you do decide to take on a swing for Tesla, you definitely want to give it more than two weeks just in case it needs to pull back and fill in some of this rally before it pushes even higher. So if you're looking for a pullback entry, you kind of want to get in around 230 to 235. If you're looking for a breakout play, above 249 is your first breakout and you can take the stock above that point, but just consider a smaller position because a breakout play is extremely risky at these highs. Um, so the next stock on our watches is going to be Apple. Now Apple had their worldwide developers conference this week. They introduced their Vision Pro, which everybody is very excited about. However, the stock hasn't really been impressive this week. And we talked about this on our Sunday video and we mentioned that it's because Apple or any time that there's a big event on the market, it's a lot of eyes looking at that stock and market makers will generally just flatline it and make it very difficult to trade. So always keep that in mind. If there's too much attention on a stock, then for option contract purposes, uh, it is going to be more favored that the stock is going to be flatlined because they want to trap everybody or trap retail traders into calls or into puts and then they just don't take the stock anywhere for that week. So Apple, as we expected, didn't make much of a move this week, but it did develop some good levels for us to watch going into tomorrow and potentially next week. First, we want Apple to break above the 181 resistance. Now, this is not a true breakout. This is just an intra range breakout so you can see it's within the range this is the point that apple got rejected at on wednesday so above that point it can push back to its all-time high level of 185 but i would start taking profits in anywhere between 184 to 185 wouldn't really risk holding it past that level especially if it's just a day trade now on a swing trade apple may very much break above 185 if markets continue rallying and it may continue rallying towards that 200 mark um to the downside, if Apple breaks below 179, it starts to enter a little bit of a gray area because that has been its support all week. So if all these buyers decide that they want to let go and it breaks below 177.20, then Apple can fall towards 175 to 176. Last but not least, NVIDIA. Now we did mention in a previous video that we expect NVIDIA to go to 1000 eventually. Obviously, it's not going to happen overnight. NVIDIA just had a monster upside move. And as we already mentioned, if too many eyes are on the stock, it usually doesn't expect to do what everybody is expecting it to do, at least not for a while. So NVIDIA, while the rest of the market catches up to its massive upside move, NVIDIA is cooling down, it's consolidating, but notice, all of its buyers are refusing to let go. Now it did trap some bears yesterday on its 380 drop. Many people probably shorted or put, took puts on the stock, but you can see that it quickly recovered above that point today. So if you're looking at Nvidia and you're looking at the short term levels and you are bearish on the stock, you need a break below 373.60 in order for the stock to potentially move to 366. Below 366, it can get very ugly very quickly and it can quickly fall towards 350 to 355. If you are bullish on the stock, then you're going to need a breakout above 405, which is this rejection point here. This breakout will take you to 420, which is going to be the highest point that Nvidia made all year, in fact, in its entire lifetime. And so if the stock breaks above that point, we call that a blue sky breakout, which means that the stock is going to rally with no real resistance. We would just have to base it off price action when we would take profits at that point. So anyways, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and like.